Meanwhile, BBC News posted an interview on X from the rally. The reporter talked to a witness who claims he saw the shooter before he started firing. I just want to play for you now, and this is a statement that was, was given to Gary O'Donoghue, our senior North America correspondent, who was there on the ground. And this is a, a course, a, a witness telling Gary the moment that he believes the Secret Service took down the alleged shooter. So, so we had a party here all day. At the, uh, you can see behind us at the, at the Brinkles Farm and Greenhouse here. We had a party. Um, and we all decided, hey, you know, when, when we hear Trump up there, we're going to walk up through the field, stand by the trees up there under the shade, yeah. and, watch the, and listen to the rally, right? We couldn't see him, but we could hear him. So we walked up, and probably five to seven minutes of Trump speaking, I'm estimating here, I have no idea, you know, but um, we noticed a guy crawling, arm, you know, bear crawling up the roof of the building beside us, 50, 50 feet away from us. So we're standing there, you know, we're pointing, we're pointing at the guy crawling up the roof. And he had a gun, right? He had a rifle. A rifle. We could clearly see him with a rifle. Absolutely. Um, we're pointing at him. The police are down there running around on the ground. We're like, hey, man, there's a guy on the roof with a rifle. And the police were like, huh, what? You know, like, like they didn't know what was going on. You know, we're like, hey, right here on the roof, we can see him from right here. We see him. You know, he's he's crawling. And next thing you know, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, why is Trump still speaking? Why have they not pulled him off the stage? I'm standing there pointing at him for, you know, two, three minutes. Secret Service is looking at us from the top of the barn. I'm pointing at that roof, just standing there like this. And next thing you know, five shots ring out. So you're, you're certain that the shots came from that guy on the roof? hundred percent. hundred percent. And he, he was up there for a couple of minutes. He was up you there. You saw him up there for a couple of minutes. Absolutely. At least three to four were, minutes. And you were telling yep. the police and the Secret Service? We were telling the police. We were pointing at him for the Secret Service who were looking at us from the top of the barn. They were looking at us the whole time when we were standing by that tree. Could they see Binoculars. Him? Could they see him? Probably not because the roof, the way the, the slope went, he was behind where they could see. But, but why is there not Secret Service on all of these roofs here? I mean, this is not a big place. I just, a gentleman who was along the fence line, just, I'm just meeting him right now. Sir, um, thank you so much. You're talking to KDKA. Can I have your name and what did you see in here? It was Ben Macer. Um, I was at the same point that probably the witness you were talking to earlier. I was up at the fence line, um, saw the guy move from roof to roof, talked, told an officer that he was on the roof. Um, the officer come look and I went back to work. Um, heard that there was somebody that could see the person so I went back to where they were standing saw the person went back and told the officer again that if he goes back to that particular spot he can see the person figuring that he would go and radio and when I turned around to go back to where I was is when the gunshots started and then it was just chaos and we all came running away and that was that was that so, um, let me get this right so you actually saw the man on top of the roof behind us yes and you're saying people p reported that to law enforcement saying there is a man on the roof of the building yes there were two two officers that were actively certain you could tell they were searching and looking for somebody and we just tried to help and tell them where the guy was and they at some point somebody obviously found him or her, the snipers found him and um that was the end of his decisions did you get a good look at the guy on the roof i did not have a good look at him but um i just seen him going from one building to another there was a little gap in between and he went and when i went back to talk to see the people that i heard that could see him 
um, seen a quick lip look at him there and then went to the officer to tell the officer and he just that was all that I all that I got how many gunshots did you hear I have no idea it was at first I didn't know what I heard and then once it became clear what I heard that it was just getting out of there and um, I helped helped a lady that had a four-year-old kid helped them get out and that was that was it we were done and everybody seem, went home and <laughs> you seem you're obviously shaken up right now just talking to me a little bit it's not every day that you're that close to anything like that how far do you think that shooter was from the stage of uh where the former president was speaking probably 200 250 yards was it parallel to where the president was where his where he was i could not see the president so i'm not 100 percent sure but it was definitely close to parallel what are your questions right now just in light of this happening uh i don't have questions i'm just you know, curious like anybody else and just seeing what's what all is still going on. I just live, I live close to here, so I'm just taking it all in and seeing what's going on. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, NBC News just reporting that one of the attendees has deceased, uh, has died from, from injuries as a result of the shooting. Joseph, you told me off camera that you may have witnessed this, and I, I'm so sorry to yes. be talking to you in, in this tragic moment, but can you describe what it is that you saw? Um, I was attending the rally. Um, I was in the set of bleachers, the very far left of the podium where Donald Trump was speaking, President Trump was speaking. Um, you know, I was there with friends. I heard several gunshots. Um, the man beside me uh, suffered a gunshot wound to the head, um, was instantly killed. Um, fell to the bottom of the bleachers. Another woman was looked like she got hit in the forearm or hand. And then at that point in time, uh, it was rather chaotic at that point because everyone, half the people were looking because they thought it was fireworks. I knew it was gunshots right away. My friend, you know, hit the deck. I was kind of looking around just trying to see where the shots were coming from. It seemed to me like the shots were coming from behind the bleachers. It seemed to me the man got hit in the head from behind. Um, he was killed instantly as far as I could tell. And at that point, a state police and a SWAT team, you know, showed, started evacuating the bleachers. And then I helped carry the man out of the bleachers to a tent that was behind um, the bleachers. You helped carry the man yourself. What was his condition when you were carrying him? He's deceased. He died. How close were you to him? Uh, a couple yards. I mean, it wasn't very far. Did you know the man? No, it's a police ranger. They put a towel over his head and then carried him off. And you said there was another woman nearby who was also injured. Where was she in relation to him? I believe she was in the bleachers, like either behind above me or just to the side of him. But it seemed like she was kind of at my flank and then she flinched and it looked like she had taken a gunshot wound to the forearm and hand. Joseph, from where I was uh, standing, we heard multiple gunshots, uh, eight to 11 shots. We've been hearing it replayed on the video here. Do you remember, can you tell, I know it was a chaotic scene, but at what at what point was it immediately when you heard the gunshots that he was he was shot or was it later on into the firing? The first seven, he was hit with, he was hit and she was hit within the first seven shots. I counted seven shots. What was going through your mind? You were right there. I know it happened so quickly, but what, what can you tell us about those moments? Uh, First, I was in shock because I, I know what gunshots sound like, so I knew they were gunshots. I just I couldn't tell from where they were coming from. And when I noticed someone got hit, then I noticed, well, it seemed like they were coming from behind me. And it just was pandemonium. And then I heard some more shots, and I couldn't, I couldn't quite tell where they were coming from. But I counted the first seven, and they were very loud and very close. Um, and it killed one man and wounded another woman. And Joseph, you told me that you're a doctor, you're an OBGYN. Uh, how did that background play into how quickly you were sort of able to assess the situation and know what happened to these individuals and, and know what was going on? Well, I, I told the police, I mean, I tried to render assistance. I told the police I could render assistance. They had another physician on the EMT team, so they kind of took over. So they didn't really need me, so I kind of helped carry them down initially out of the bleachers. Um, yeah, I mean, there wasn't, there wasn't, the man that got hit, there was no assistance 
that needed to be given. And unfortunately, his family witnessed the whole thing. They, it seemed like he had several family members in the bleacher with him. And they were quite upset. They didn't know, they were in shock. They didn't know, quite know what was going on. But the man was definitely killed instantaneously. Could you tell us sort of how many family members or people who knew him were, were with him and, and what, what was their reaction? I thought there was five people. They were, two of them are relatively hysterical. So, but they were, you know, when we took the man out of the bleachers, he went to the tent. There was an aid tent or some type of tent behind the bleachers where they took the body and they immediately evacuated the family with them. And the two out of the five, it seemed, you know, in shock, hysterical. Like they were still trying to process what was going on. Joseph, from, from where I was standing, we, we heard the shots. Uh, we saw the president go down. Yeah, I saw President Trump get hit. Yeah. What, what, can you tell us what, what details like you remember? Got, it seemed like his head was off to the side and it seemed like he got nicked in the ear. Was that before the Secret Service took him down to the ground, covered him? Right before the Secret Service. I mean, it was maybe, again, it's hard to tell, like, you know, time dilates when, like, it seemed like it was a second or two. Like, that first seven shots that went off, the man got hit. He was killed almost instantly. The woman in the bleachers, she got injured, like, she got hit in the forearm and the hand. And then in those rounds that were fired, again, I was videoing the event, so that's when I saw Trump get hit. And it seemed to me like looking at, he was looking to the side and the round grazed his ear, so. Could you tell the, the gentleman that, that was hit in the head what, what uh, angle he was in relation to the former president, like which direction the bullets were, were coming from and to? So it looked like he was facing the president at the very far left portion of the of the bleachers, so he's directly facing it. Again, it seemed to me like the shots were coming from the rear, like behind us. And for me, it seemed like the man was in the way. Like, uh, you know, I, I guess. In the way of the former president? No, it seemed like the man was in the way of the shots between whoever was shooting, shooting the gun and the president. Um, the man was hit, it seemed like he was in the crossfire. And I know. And I know you're in shock and still processing all of this. It's sort of hard to evaluate our own emotions in this in this moment. But you just experienced something horrific. Yes. What What can you tell us about your state of mind right now? Yeah, you know, I, I've, I've had opportunities to go to these rallies before. It was the first one I ever went to. I had, you know, time off to go do it. I was kind of excited to go. But, you know, it's... You know, everyone, everyone, you know, it's it's something you don't expect. It comes out of the blue. It's like a bolt out of the blue, and it's just, it's shocking. Um, you know, the way politics goes in this country, it just seems like it's really polarized. Everyone's just very angry. I'm honestly shocked this didn't happen earlier. Um, I was commenting to my friend and went with the to the event with me. I was like, you know, you know, the back behind the bleachers, it's really open. It seems like a really open venue, and it's just, you know, I, I got this sense that, you know, someone really wanted to do something and again I, I was openly talking to her and i was like you know if something was bad was going to be happen this is the perfect venue to have i just said this like an hour before it happened i was like this would be the perfect place to do it and you know surprisingly enough it happened a devastatingly prescient observation yeah, from I, you uh, l let me ask you one more question because f from from where i was there was confusion then trump stood up and and there were some cheers and then People sort of remained, those that weren't in sort of the immediate zone where you were, um, people were still sort of cheering, talking, trying to figure out what was going on. Uh, how quickly did you know that whether or not there was still a, a, a dangerous situation? It, it seemed like uh, people sort of started to try to move on very quickly, not sure what had happened, right? So how, how soon did you know whether or not it was even even safe? Did you want to get out of there? What, what did you witness in sort of the immediate aftermath once the shots stopped? Well, see, back to the shots went off, everyone thought it was a prank. Everyone, I think, got a sense. Like, when I looked out into the crowd, everyone thought, it, I think the initial reaction, everyone thought it was a prank. I knew better it was a gunshot because I just saw a guy got hit. And it did. for those of us that didn't see, it's, it's, some people started laughing, some people were confused. It, 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 confused. it wasn't immediately clear to the crowd that didn't witness what you witnessed, you know, that this was, in fact, a, a dangerous and deadly situation. Oh, it was a dangerous and deadly situation. I, I, the problem is it's a large crowd. And when the gunshots went off, I think they were, again, my sense was they were being shot from behind, so they sounded a bit muffled. So. It sounded more like a firecracker going off. So I think the initial reaction from the people around me were like, okay, well, someone brought fireworks. I just knew better. I know what gunshots sound like. And, you know, when I, when I saw the guy got, 
took a gunshot wound to the head and I saw the woman who got hit in the forearm and the hand, I just knew that it wasn't fireworks. I mean, it wasn't fireworks initially, but uh, I don't think, I think the majority of the crowd didn't understand that it was, fire, it was gunfire. And um, I think people took it really seriously when the SWAT team started jumping over the rails. So I, I, I don't know what to tell you outside of that. Um, Joseph, yeah. I know this, I, I can't imagine what it takes to describe what you just witnessed in these moments right in the aftermath. So we thank you so, so much sure. for sharing. We're happy to